Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to our National Training Week session. I'm Adip and I'm delighted to be your host for today's session. We are honored to have our expert trainer, Mr. Alex, who will be sharing valuable insights on Boost Your Search present with uh, Google SEO. During the session, please feel free to ask questions in the chat box below. Mr. Alex will address all questions at the end of the session. As a reminder, please keep your microphones muted throughout the session to avoid any disruptions. Without further ado, I hand over the floor to Mr. Alex. Okay, so thank you very much, Lip, for the introduction. Hi, if you can hear me, can you put in the chat box? Say yes or good morning or uh, let's greet each other a little bit. Is everyone okay? Can you hear me? All good? Good morning, Law. Good morning, Rauda. Good morning, Jaga. Okay, so sorry, I'm, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Good morning, everyone. Okay, we have people coming in and excited to share with you these 60 minutes of what I can compressing everything I know about SEO. Now, could you share with me what industry are you at in the in the in, in, in uh from where you're coming from, like what industry are you at? So that I can maybe customize a bit of the topic along the way, and you can ask me questions and put inside the chat box. And in the last five to ten minutes, we will answer Q and A, so everyone can learn. Yeah, HR, awesome from Abby. So what other other industry you from? A company. Medical, awesome. So we work with a lot of B two B, B two C companies from uh healthcare, food supplements, renewable energy, uh, what do you call machineries? Uh, all these different different places. Uh, when it comes to SEO, if you ask me, SEO is very good for both B two B or B two C. And if I B two B. And SEO becomes even more important. So let's take a look. Now, my name is Alex, by the way. And I will skip my introduction because it's not important. The more important thing, thing is what you are going to get away today, right? So why do people do SEO? The first one is because the traffic is more passive, right? It's extremely passive, especially if you are able to rank number one on Google, you realize that you're going to lock in the position for quite some time until someone takes over you. So Google has the ability to give us and generate consistent traffic to our site. Whether you're sleeping, you're playing, you're on holiday, that's the power of Google. It's a opposed to social media. So social media require constant effort as seen. You need to publish posts, publish video every single day to grow the community. And the moment you stop, it's going to be like a waterfall. No one sees you anymore. 
but Google is a little bit different. You will reduce um the traffic, but if you don't post for a certain time, three months, six months, you will still get traffic coming in or to even one year, right? Now, the second thing is because we want to reduce our advertising costs. For those who run ads last time, 10 years ago, five years ago, you realize that, hey, the cost per lead usually are not expensive, right? So now, 10 years later, you realize that the cost per conversion is usually getting more and more expensive. Everything becomes more expensive, more competitor, more competition. What else? Uh, inflation, everything just become more expensive. So think about it. Three years from now, five years from now, do you think the ad cost is going to be cheaper or it's going to be more expensive? So that's why one of the reasons people want to do SEO is to reduce advertising costs because it's free, organic. And number three, the leads that you generated directly from website are usually higher quality. Now, if you run ads, sometimes you may encounter problems like uh, people who just try to spam us or people who just depress the accidentally click on your ads or when you ask them question they don't reply or people who are not your target audience right and when you do seo you can have these three very very good benefits number one is predictable what do i mean by predictable you know you can see a trend before it actually take off right so in google you can go to google trends and see what are the things that people are talking about. So that's number one. And number two is sustainable because the traffic is organic. You attract people not by reaching out to them. You attract visitors by attracting them, not going out to them, but attracting them to come to you based on keywords and other optimization process. And you can scale. So the more that you are able to, to, to do, optimize, then your market share of expansion of traffic is going to go higher and higher. Google is going to pick up more and more and more in keywords for your website, provided you doing you keep you maintain it well, you're doing the right thing to optimize the website architecture, the structure, the content, the backlink, and so on and so forth. And SEO, of course, you build better trust and brand positioning. Anyone can find you on Google. And number six, the last one would be easier to maintain once it pick up. So this is the purpose and benefits of SEO. If you are looking for alternative way to help you taking your company marketing to the next level. But not everything is a good side. SEO has its own downside. So let's explore a bit about what's the downside of SEO. Number one, they have this thing called delay feedback loop. Meaning, whatever you do on SEO for your website, let's say you write articles, you put in some keywords, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to explode. It's not like that. The feedback is long. It may take weeks. It may take months. It may take years. All right? Depending on the competitiveness of the keyword itself and then the other things like um, how old is your website, whether your website has been penalized before, how many pages do you have, and so on and so forth. So delay feedback loop. So the downside of SEO is a lot of times when you do, you have to just have to be patient and wait for a while and then you monitor. When you do it in social media, when you run ads, it's instant. You get instant clicks, instant reach, and then one week, two weeks, you will know how many people convert. Then you can make adjustment very quickly. Uh, SEO is the same thing. You do the same thing. You have to do the testing, but it's going to take longer time and you have to be patient a bit, right? Sometimes it's not that the thing that you do doesn't work. It's just that it takes time to work. Number two, uncertainty is because of what? The algorithm updates. So Google algorithm make changes, small, minor changes, five to 600 times a year. Call updates will always have like two to three times and recently a lot of people has been impacted by google call updates because of coming on the ai part and a lot of people are actually spamming google with a lot of ai content so if you are publishing articles i would suggest you never ever just copy paste directly from ai you must add the human touch you must be authentic yeah so or else 
when they just update and then it's going to impact your Google search results and then your whole traffic will just tank. And number three, it will require initial hard work and effort. A lot of things that you do now, you won't see written immediately because of the delay feedback loop issue, uh, the, the situation. Yeah. So you will need to put in time, effort and grind through consistently to do it and then to see results. It requires some technical skill. If you want to go deep into SEO, it can go very, very, very deep. So because SEO break up into few parts, the first part is the technical SEO part where you may need to, you need to touch on what we call website design, website structure, website plugins, the backend settings. Or of course, you can work with the web developer. All right. And next one, you will want to require budget to invest certain tools. So if you really want to go into SEO, don't just do, uh, don't just use all the free tools. It may not be enough. You may need to invest. Uh, to me, it's an investment. Yeah. So we invest certain SEO tools and certain AI tools to help us to analyze data in a more uh, accurate way and then to help us to manage the campaign in a more structured way. And last but not least, you may impact by Google call update. So these are the similar uncertainties that we are talking about. So with the rise of AI, how do you think Google is going to be impacted? Right? How user is going to transform their way in the search area? So there's one very um one, one thing, one shift that you will slowly see. Yeah? So people will start saying, okay, it's no more search engine now. Because of the impact of AI, it becomes more like a answer engine, right? Three years, five years down the road, are they going to be search engine? I believe so too. Uh, it's going to have search engine, just that it's going to blend in, right? When you type in a type box, a keyword inside Google, what it come out is the answer. From search to answer. Instead of clicking one by one, check and find the information, now, Google will just give you a answer, a short answer. And then if you want to learn more, you can just click inside to the website from search to answer. So this is what we call the search generative experience. Search generative experience. Each of us, when we use Google, we must have this SGE. Yeah? SGE. This is how it looks like. Search generative experience. When you type in a keywords, example, in this case, how to manage stress at work. And then you will see, uh, here are some of the tips of managing stress at work, identify stressor, da, 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 da. all those are by AI. And then below with the resources that they give you. Without even you scrolling down, click, scrolling down, click, scrolling down, click. So search generative experience. All of our Google should have this, yeah? Now there's two different tools um, that uh, I would like to share with you that's upcoming and rising. It's called Perplexity and called Arc.net. It is like a startup trying to contend, trying to revamp, to revolutionize, right? To evolve how search engines could look at, look, look, look at in the future. Now, Perplexity.ai is an answer engine. Basically, they will bring you all the, uh, what do you call, the, 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 the resources, the information for you. And if you go to Google, you're going to see a lot of what? A lot of ads. So let me just do one example and show you. If I just go to a random one here. Okay, so there's a lot of things in my tab here. So if, if I go to how to choose a pillow case. All right, so you will see search generative experience, right? Fabric, all those things. And then maybe I type pillow case. You will see a lot of ads, all right? Ads, and then more ads here. Sponsor ads here, and then go down. You have some ads here. Okay, so no ads here. So you have the ads on top. So now if you go to perplexity.ai, 
It's also a answer engine, AI powered answer engine. You can do the same thing and you realize that it, the dashboard is looks like ChatGPT. Yeah. So I'm going to just type, I want to choose a pillow or type pillow case. And then they'll give you answer. Okay, what is pillowcase? And then where can you get this pillowcase from where? And then related questions. And then some sources to help you to find. You can find images, videos. So it's a bit like answer and it's more like an answer engine to help you find information that you need. Mm. So that's called perplexity. It's quite fun to use. If you have time, you can try out and you can always upgrade. Mm. Then the other one is Arc, right? It's similar. And then you can see how this both is trying to change the search engine is going to be. However, does that mean that Google is going to be threatened? The answer is no. I think it's going to be a long way because Google still have over 90% of market share in the whole world and 96% of people in Malaysia, uh, most of the time they are using Google. So the market share is still very, very high and it's not that easy for people to switch suddenly or uh, from Google to perplexity. It becomes even our words, right? Google it, Google it, Google it. Yeah. So this is something that's happening right now. If you go to YouTube, you type end of search engine. CNBC actually has a video about it huh? where they're talking about how Google is a bit slow, all those things. Yeah, it's very interesting film. Uh, not film, it's a 10 minutes 10 minutes stories. So Google also released the March updates to mount to, to update a lot of things, right? Which is to help to reduce to fight to fight unhelpful content within the search. So helpful content update is now part of the core update. All of this leading to a 40% reduction of unhelpful content within search. Meaning if your content is from AI, there's no value to the user, then it's going to be likely be uh, the index. Not the index, maybe your ranking is going to be affected. So a lot of people will have this issue. After the core update, I'm not sure if you realize, if you check your own analytics, you, you can compare before and after. So a lot of people actually, after core update, their traffic starts to drop down. Some people, of course, may go up, but depends on your industry and what you do. Yeah, This is just some ideas and what's happening right now for you, for, for the world. So in SEO, we look at a few things. Eh? Number one, if you want to do SEO, there's a white hat method and then uh, there's a black hat method. White hat method for SEO is where you want to do it to comply with Google's guideline and then make sure it's user's first approach where you want to demonstrate your EAT. So Google wants you to demonstrate your EEAT. It, the first E stands for your experience. If you want to write a blog, they want to, they want you who have someone who have experience in that niche, in that industry. Then the second E is the expertise that you demonstrate. How do you use that? How do you do that? A is the authority, right? How many years? How many installation done? Uh, what are the uh, what are the things that you have done to solve the problem? Where have you featured in? And then the last one is T, the trustworthiness. Uh, whether trustworthiness can be, uh, whether your 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 profile is it visible inside your website or your profile is just an author admin author. You know when people write articles, right? Written by admin, written by admin, and then the admin got no picture. On. So this is not a very good way to demonstrate your it. So if you want to improve your SEO, one thing is to use this as a framework, EEAT, demonstrate EEAT in your entire website so that Google pick up the signal. And when your website always focus on user first approach, meaning your content is helpful, add value, people like it, people stay long time in your website, and complying with Google's guideline, then you have a very high chance to start growing and ranking. So that's what Google wants. Now, the other one is called Black Hat. Now, I won't go deep 
into Black Hat, I just want to tell you that in digital marketing space, there's this Black Hat tactics, right? So Black Hat tactic means something that is not compliant with Google's guideline. You are not following Google's policy. They focus on Google first approach. They just want to try to beat the algorithm eh, and see what uh, Google wants. And then they will focus on Google. It's, they are not focused on user. And then example, buy traffic, push traffic, buy links to get a lot of links, people to link to you so that it gives a false signal to tell Google that, wow, so many people are linking to you. You must be someone that is worthy to mention. Or when you do keyword spamming, keyword stuffing, a lot of keyword spamming, or when you clock certain things that you redirect people to different pages, all this little, little thing is called black hat tactic that try to fool Google. Now, not to say you cannot do, as uh, best is you don't do it because the risk is at your own. Eh? So if you want to do it, that's going to be a, a different class, different story. So to for us to rank well on Google in a sustainable way, you use white hat, okay? We are going to talk about white hat to help you manage it in a more, in a safer way so that you can grow sustainably. There are about 30 web search engines in this world, Bing, Yahoo, Yandex, DuckDuckGo, but Google has 92% as of July 2023 market share. So next time, if Yahoo is the number one search engine, next time we're going to talk about Yahoo search engine optimization. All right. So let me show you what are some of the things that we can do to enhance your website presence through boosting, uh, through using SEO methodology. First, you need to have a website and your website must be optimized for user experience. If you want to rank on Google, number one, optimize your website for user experience. Example, your website need to load how many seconds? Within three seconds. Your website must be mobile friendly, meaning to say people scroll on your website on their mobile phone. You don't want them to zoom in the words. You don't want them to zoom in the picture and trying to read what is inside the website. So this is called mobile friendly or mobile responsive. Mobile responsive means people scroll your website up, down, not left, right. So there are certain websites that you go in I'm sure you have this experience where you have to scroll left, right, left, right. All the words is too long that you have to scroll to the right, right? So this is not a good user experience. Or the button, not clickable. Button, too small. Link, too small. Click on the link, go to error pages. So all these things is called user exp uh, related to user experience and Google don't want that. So if you have all this little issue, fix that. And then you will see results. Just the simple things like that. And keep SEO in mind, keep search engine in mind. We want to make sure the pages that we created need to be picked up by Google. So when you publish a page on Google, Google may not know. It just exists in the World Wide Web. It just exists in WWW. But Google doesn't know. So you have to give the signal quickly to let Google know so that Google will index, they call it index. Uh, index means Google pick up, Google record, Google know what it is for, so they can rank it for you. So this is how it works. Okay, I'm going to skip this. So how search engine works is this. Yeah? Number one, Google will always crawl your website every single day, right? They will crawl a lot of website. They will send robots. Just think of it like that. Scroll, crawl, crawl, crawl. They reach your website they will want to record what your website is about. Oh, your website is about flower. Your website is about selling cars. Your website is about uh, construction. Your website is about HR. Your website is about supplying medical equipment to the hospital. So Google want to do that. Google always do that. Even though you don't tell them, they will still come and crawl your website. They want to record. Why do Google want to do that? Because you can rank when people find you. Uh, example, medical equipment supplier near me. Uh, then Google know. Ah, I remember I got this person, got this website. Then probably your website will appear on top of the search results. So that's how Google search engine works. Crawling to identify, record what you do so that they have a database. 
and then they rank you when someone search for you. That's how search engine works. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. If I have any question, please put in the chat box so that I can answer it later, all right? If your website is not indexed by Google, meaning your website, when it's not being picked up by Google Signal, this is what you may you will look like. Example, href login, right? It's an SEO tool. And then href user login. There's no description, nothing, just this keyword only. So if it's a normal website, usually you will still see a description down there, isn't it? So this is just an example to show you. No index, but does that mean how it looks like? Three things to improve your SEO presence. Number one, work on your technical part, which is the back-end part. This one, I just now mentioned already, three main points. Number one, load fast. Don't let it load too slow. I'll share you some tools to do some audit. Number two, make sure it's mobile-friendly. Yeah, don't let people zoom in. Make sure your words is big enough. Yeah, picture is clean enough. And then mobile responsive. Make sure don't let people to, uh, what do you call, everything must be within the screen. Let them up, down, up, down like that. Just like when you scroll Facebook. Do you need to zoom in when you scroll Facebook? I don't think so, right? So a lot of us just like that. And do you need to left, right, left, right when you do Facebook? Most of the time, no. Everything is fit inside that width of the screen. What else? Next is to optimize your content. All your website have different, different pages. Home page, about us page, services page, blog page, contact us page. All these pages must have well formatted. Well formatted means you have headings and then you have uh, subheadings. Then you have paragraphs, you have images, you have videos and things like that to make it into a proper web page so people can quickly find and relay the information they are providing them. So how can we optimize this is other than just writing, we want to add in keywords, right? To make it more relevant for Google, for the user. And third one, off page link building, where we want to get uh, people linked to us. So example, if you get a feature, maybe a podcast feature from BFM, uh, when you got a feature interview by Star Newspaper. So can you just imagine Star Newspaper talking about your company, say, hey, if you want the best uh, HR company, HR payroll software example, go find this company. So they'll link to you. So this is called getting backlink from people. And getting backlink is not the easiest way to do, especially if you want to get, you want to get backlink from those high authority websites. So a lot of people will just focus on the first two, which is also okay, yeah? This is the three pillars of SEO. You have technical, you have on-page, you have off-page to improve your overall Google SEO presence for your website. Let me share with you some ideas now. The first few tools that I'd like to recommend you is called GT Metrics and PageSpeed Insights. So this is to test whether your website is okay or not okay in terms of the web speed and performance. So let me just go in and just quickly show you how it works. So example, if I go to, just go to Google, type page speed test. You can choose the first one, page speed insights and enter your website name. So I'm gonna use a random site. Let's say uh, this sentence. Oh, okay. So Beauty Academy, right? Just click here, put here, and analyze. You will have two score. The first score is the mobile score, web performance score. The second score is the desktop performance score. And then they will tell you something like this. If it's, you are in the red color zone, means you will have to improve there are certain issues that we need to fix. So at least you must stay in the yellow color zone, all right? Yellow color zone means 50 to 89, this one. So let me just go back. Okay, so something is wrong. Huh? Uh, maybe 
the line is bad girl. So you do it again. Okay, so maybe I let me try another one, another company. Okay, let's do this one. Let's try. So this bit of score will tell you what do you need to work on. So example, if you want to make sure your website load fast, number one is to upload picture with smaller file size. So please don't upload 4K, 8K types of HD picture because your website doesn't need that big pixel to help you um, to, to, to showcase to the people. So if you look at mobile, it's 84. It's okay, not bad. All right. And then if you go down, they'll tell you which part of your website needs to work on. Example, serve image in next gen format. Meaning to say this website's images is in JPEG form, in PNG form. So your image, all right, your PNG, your JPEG, right? So what you want to do is to turn your image to this format called WebP. All right, dot WebP. So you see a dot JPEG, dot PNG. Now you convert it to WebP. Just go Google and type PNG to WebP converter. Then you upload the picture inside your website. So WebP is an image format developed by Google to help website load faster. Of course, there has some other things. Uh, all this technical stuff that you can always check with your web developer and how to optimize it. So tools number one. Now this one is the extra tools called GT Matrix. It's uh, the same thing. So if you want to get second opinion, you can use GT Matrix. All right. So let me just go down. How do you improve your website performance? Make sure the small file size is smaller. If you want to compress your image without losing much quality, just go to compress.io. Compact, uh, convert images from JPEG PNG to WebP format. And then if you surf international market, let's say you are in Malaysia, based in Malaysia, but you have APEC region customers, then you may want to use CDN. CDN is like placing uh, your server or your website in two different, different countries. So that when people want to find your website, want to look for you, it's easier for them, faster for them to reach out to you compared to having a server in Malaysia. The time to travel, the distance, sending the data over takes longer of time. So CDN means Cloud Delivery Network, help to increase the speed of your website in other countries when they searching for you. So these are some of the tools and plugins may not be relevant to you if you are not using WordPress. Eh? Now, if your website engine behind is using WordPress to build, then this may be some of the plugins that you can consider to invest to help you optimize all these things. So these are just suggestions. May or may not be relevant. So just, just screenshot if you want. Yeah, and then you can check it out later. Next one. Mobile friendliness too. You can go to Google outside. Come here, type Bing mobile friendliness test two and do the same thing. Okay, analyze. Basically what this tool does is that they will tell you whether your website optimized in mobile version or not. How do they know? few things. Number one, they look at the font size. Is your font very small? Number two, they look at the link between the gap. Let's say your menu bar, you open inside your mobile, there's a lot of link, right? So if your link is too close to each other, then it could also affect. Hey, what happened? Eh? Okay, let me try that again. Right, let me give you an example. If you go to mobile friendliness test two, they'll tell you, okay, viewport is configured correctly. Meaning to say all your videos image is inside that width of your web uh, mobile. So let's say this is my mobile phone. Everything must be within the width. So not over, don't over. Over means not friendly really. 
content fits device with. So all your content words is within the screen. And then text on the page is readable, meaning to say, I can read, everyone can read. So readable font size, you can take down. Huh? Mobile phone, what are the font size do you need to have? So Google requirement is 16px. That means you don't put 12, you don't put 11px. You put 16, make it bigger. Links and tabs target are sufficiently large and touch friendly. So all the links and tap target, tap target means tap, right? the menu, the tick. So it's not too close together so that sometimes people have the press two things or you have sometimes you have tap thumb, you have the press two thing. So this is not what Google want. So just doing these small little things will improve the overall user experience and hence it will also tell Google that your website is good. Google will tend to show you more to people. So two types of keywords. The next thing I would like to talk to you about is the content part. So the technical part, just do these few things. Content part, you can do these few things. The first one is to understand keywords. Ranking on keywords, there are two types. Short tail keywords, long tail keywords. Short tail keywords are example, renovation, home renovation, very, very uh, short, less specific. Long tail keyword means you want to rank for longer term, like renovation, house idea, house renovation, Kuala Lumpur, home renovation ideas for small house. These are longer. So if you want to rank on Google, first you have to look at the specificity of the keyword. Is this specific or is this more specific? So let's say you only serve KL, customers are uh, then this keyword is very relevant to you house renovation Kuala Lumpur so usually this type of longer tail keyword is easier to rank lower search volume but easier to rank if you have short tail keywords you can rank this if your company is growing big established for many years and people know who you are and it's e you can rank short tail keywords easier easily so example if you go to Google, you type camera. Who do you think should appear first? It can be Sony. It can be Nikon. Right? It can be other, 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 other brands. But if you put how to choose camera in 2024 for outdoor photography. Uh, example, uh, longer term. Uh, then these are long tail keywords. Then you can compete to rank these out keywords. Instead of, I want to rank this keyword called camera because I'm selling camera. So it's going to be too far fetch for you if you are just starting out. The next thing we want to learn when you optimize your website for Google is to understand the intent. So this intent will help you decide whether you want to write this article or you want to... Uh, use this article for transactional purposes. Example, you write this transactional keywords article to get people to buy something. Let me show you one um, example. In Google, sometimes they have four types of intention when people type. Sometimes people say it's only three types. So anyway, it's about the same. Yeah? So the first type of intention that people always talk about or when you go to Google is navigation intent. When you go to Google, you type keywords. Let's say you want to log into Facebook. You type Facebook login, right? You type Maybank or CMB login. You won't type social media login. So it's straight go to the person's brand. Navigation intent. So this is first style of people. The second style of people when they go to Google is they want to find information. How to do something. Uh, what are the tips to study better? What are the ways to reduce stress? how to take care of your laptop, how to do this, how to do that, tutorial for this, tutorial for that. So this is called informational intent. So there's another group of people, sometimes we will do that, right? And then the last one is called transactional or commercial, or commercial type of intent, where people are actually want to buy something. So example, cafe near me. So 
why would people type cafe near me? Because they are thinking about having food near them, near their area. Best gaming laptop, 2023. Best second hand gaming laptop, 2024, 2025. So why would people want to type this word called best gaming laptop? It's because they are ready to buy something. Where to buy travel insurance? Five-star Penang Hotel. So why would people start researching? Because they have a plan ahead. So very highly, these people is going to convert into sales. So this group of people, information in 10 people, when you write how-to articles, tutorial, it's more about getting traffic. But it's not going to help you to monetize your products. So those that were monetized are usually this, come from this type of keyword intent. All right? For companies who are doing a product space or retail base. One way to find keywords is to use this tool called Uber Suggest. And there are a lot of tools out there. And if you ask me, beginner friendly is Uber Suggest. And it's free to use for few searches per day. Basically, what you want to do is to go to these keywords and then you can find like what people are actually typing. So this is a volume, average volume for the past 12 months. This is the keyword search term queries that people are typing and it indicates and show you how difficult it is to rank. SD means SEO difficulty. If it's in the green color zone mean it's easier to rank. Yellow color zone means harder to rank because a lot of people start to rank, want to rank or compete for this keyword. Example, Pico laser before and after one treatment. Pico laser review. Yeah. So the next one is called PD. PD is for paid difficulty. If you run Google Ads, uh, then you look at this one. Higher point means more competitive. Technically speaking, you want to find higher volume search, lower SEO difficulty types of keyword to put inside your website to rank, to have a better chance to rank. Okay. So let me just do a quick one and show you how to do that. So just go to example, I mean, Uber suggests already. Let's say you type, um, choose Malaysia. And I'm going to type in the keywords, air fryer. Or medical devices. Now, it may be true bot, eh? so you may want to niche down. Like what kind of medical devices are we talking about? So for the sake of case study, I just use this one. And you were able to see like what is the average search volume for these keywords. And you scroll down, it will tell you all the related keywords that you're going to see. Mm. All right, it's a bit slow. Okay, we got it. So go down, go down, go down, go down. All right. So medical supplies coaching, medical supplies authority Malaysia, medical devices. Uh, company, act, class, questions, example of medical device. So you come here, you click, click all. Then it will show you this keyword, right? Medical supply, coaching, medical sub devices, class, ISO, these are the volume. So you want to rank on this Google, it's easier to do so. Yeah, that's how you do keyword research identify the keyword, and then start optimizing inside your content, your website. All right. The next thing that you want to improve on to improve your Google website is to learn how to write title and better meta tag description. So example, this is what you see when you Google, right? This is called the title tag. This is called meta description. This is called site links. Title tag is the headline. It's what people search when you type in the keyword, it will appear. Description is where you attract people to click on it. This is the recommended characters, not by Google, it's by the SEO communities. They found out that these groups of characters usually works best. 50 to 60 characters for tag title. 
50 to 160 for meta descriptions. And then site link. Site link means extra menu bar. So your website, you have home page, about us page, services page, right? It will appear here when Google thinks it's relevant to the user. Your goal is to review whether you like this title tag, whether you like this meta description or not. Then you can make some adjustment over there. Okay. So say, for example, let me share with you a very simple way to do it. Just go to Google. Maybe I'll type uh, another makeup miracle. Okay, this website. So what I want to do is open a Google tab. I'll type site SITE. And then you choose like this. Okay, put in the URL and then you hit enter. So what I'm going to see is all the pages that is picked up by Google. Makeup course in Malaysia, portfolio, professional makeup services in Malaysia, and row. These are the pages that Google pick up. Right? And the next thing that you want to do is to go through all these pages and see is this something that you want it to be or you want a different one? So example, if I go to page one, makeup courses in Malaysia, makeup miracle academy, dot, dot, dot. Now, dot, dot, dot means too long. So you want to keep it within 50 to 60 characters. So this company do a good job in terms of putting in what? Keywords here. Makeup courses in Malaysia is the entire keyword. And then they make sure their description is within the length. Creative hairstyling course, 30 hour course to help make a Cup artist gain deeper understanding and styling. Now, this one maybe you can be better. Example, Malaysia number one or Malaysia top hair styling courses. Over 500 of uh, thousands of students trained to help them to improve their makeup, become uh, a makeup artist, and so on and so forth. So you can always improve this description to increase the click through rate. So just go through here and just look at this one. Look at this one. One by one by one by one by one. And you can just change from the back end of your site. Okay. Right. So I'm going to go to the one more, which is the off page. Okay. The other thing that you want to do is to improve your Google, optimize your Google business. So how does this work? Huh? If you go to, if I type cafe near me. Now this is another, another thing really. Yeah? So let me just come here. This is another method to improve your Google search performance. One is to optimize your Google business profile. So let me just show you how it works. Just come here, cafe near me. And then you go down and, oops. Sorry, this is not okay. Cafe near uh, Subang. So you can see, right? Upstairs Cafe, this uh, what is this called? Lisset Cafe, Foxhole Bakery Cafe, more places. So this is Google Business Profile. You don't need a website to rank this. Usually, this Google Profile is mainly for a uh, very beneficial for people who have a retail shop. Yeah, retail shop like florist, they call facial center, spa center, FFB, hairstyle. So people can come in and then to buy your things. You want to optimize this Google business profile so that you can also generate organic traffic even if you don't have a website. This is called Google business profile. Just sign up for a free account. And then you can get listed on Google straight. So example, one of the things that you can see from here is that performance. So if you go to performance, you can see the data from the past six months. And then you can go down and see, okay, there are about 3,000 people saw this business profile. And then 1,500 of them are actually looking, uh, what do you call, show this profile when they type this keyword called 
digital marketing, funnel duo, media marketing, media funnel. So these are the keywords that people are type that make my website come out. Then you can use this to optimize your content. Oh, these are the keyword people are typing. So what can I do to improve these keywords? Okay. Google business profile, optimize performance. Number two, make sure your photos, the first photo is very important. This is the first impression photo. The cover photo must be nice. HD. Yeah. Uh, like this one looks good. Looks like people. Uh, and then of course, very important one, everyone knows it, which is the reviews. So in, encourage them to upload photos when they leave a review or upload a videos. Uh, so it makes increase the relevancy of the signal to Google. So once you have all these little, little things, SEO is not that difficult as it seems to be, unless you really want to go, uh, want to really expand very aggressively into different market share, then the different strategy will already to be applied. Okay, so now we have our 10 more minutes. I am just going to summarize a full thing that you can take away after this class, yeah? So how to increase presence and traffic to your website with SEO. So number one, understand that SEO, you have three pillars, SEO. So the first pillar that we want to talk about is technical SEO. So what does technical SEO mean? One, make sure your website turn images to WebP. Okay. Number two, compress images or crop or reduce file size before uploading just doing these little little things will help you number three improve website speed right so using google page speed inside number four mobile friendly Mobile responsive. So you can use this through Bing Mobile Friendliness Tool. Hmm. Now, next thing you want to improve on your website is the on page SEO. So, on page SEO means content, what you see on the website. So, use Uber Suggest or any other SEO, SEO tools yeah, you, your, you choose to identify volume keywords that has volume, lower competition. So add these keywords inside your pages or articles. Right, very simple. Just do this. Now it's not a guarantee that you do here, then it's going to rank. It's not like that. Huh? I just giving you the best practices that if you follow this, you 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 it won't it won't bring you to Holland. You know what I mean? It won't bring you to other places. So this is a correct way, best practices to do it. And number two, adjust your meta title and meta description. So all these little, little things will help improve the overall ranking signal. Okay, last one of page SEO is about building, link building. We talk about getting yourself featured in PR, all these places, right? That's number one. But it's hard to control sometimes. So one you can do is to optimize your Google business profile. Because it's off the page. You don't need a website to do it. You do it outside your website. So inside your Google business profile, you can come here, say, for example, a Makeup Academy, Kuala Lumpur example. 
So you see, right? Make a miracle backstage academy, etc. Then you can see website. So just insert your website here. It will bring you to the web person website. So now it will have a link, if a back link, yeah. So that is very important to tell Google the signal of this site. Now SEO is a very big topic, so you can talk like one full day, uh, two days. Sometimes people do it for three days, and uh, that is because. SEO may be very technical. Example, you also need to learn how to monitor your website and then how do you monitor and measure whether your SEO is on track. So you will account, you will, you need to learn different, different tools to find those important things to connect together. And I hope this one hour will give you a, a very easy way to help you quickly optimize your website so that you can start seeing some results. All right, so I have about five minutes here. And if you have any question, please put in the chat box or you can unmute and then you can share with me or you have a website link you want to put inside chat box. You want me to take a look? Just let me know. I'll help you to go through it. All right, so anyone, any questions you want to ask me? Anything you want to know? See, okay, or which part that you like me to share more, then you can let me know. Okay. If we compress the picture, the resolution of picture will reduce, right? Yes, that is correct. But if you do want to com if you do want to lose so much of the quality. You can use the tools like compress.io. Sorry, compressor io. Okay, so don't just compress directly from your laptop. It may not be it, it may affect the quality. So this one it won't affect the quality much. Right? So they have an example. Huh? So before, after the quality is about the same. So you can use this compressor.io number one. Number two, you crop your picture first. So don't just compress. Let's say your picture is like 2 MB. You crop it first, make it smaller, like 500 KB, 500, uh, what do you call the pixel? Then only you compress. Then it makes more sense. Compared to 4 MB, you compress to 2 MB. It's still very big. Then you crop it may looks it may affect the whole thing. So this is what I would suggest you to do. Okay. And these tools may help you. The zoo um or zoo. Hi Alex, what is standard cost to appoint the party to manage our SEO? Or is it one time or yearly? Usually SEO agency requires a contract of six to twelve months, uh ranging from a few hundred to few thousand, depending on the things that they do. So the price range of the market rate heavily dependent on a few things. Huh? Number one, uh, numbers of keywords they will help you to rank. Number two, whether they will help you write articles. Number three, whether they'll help you do outreach. Example, they will say, okay, I'm going to help you find more PR people to talk about you. Okay, uh, then they're going to find, 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 find. And then they, they may have some additional costs involved. So it will look at... Uh, and feel these few few little things to decide uh to judge the costing. Okay, so let's say you have lesser keywords to rank, you don't need to write article, don't need to do outreach, then it won't be uh super expensive. It can be just a uh, few hundreds to one, two thousand, two thousand plus like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So any other questions that you like to me the questions. All right, good. So very important if you are uh if you are doing SEO is to measure the growth of traffic and then whether the traffic is relevant to you and whether you get results. And probably you won't see quickly. You may want to have like a, a bit of timeline, like three months you reviews, whether there's an increase, six months or one year, uh, like that. Then after that, it will, should stay consistent. Huh? Even if you don't do anything on the SEO part, you just stop everything, right? Then it will just stay for a while. And probably 
by then you will want to you want to take over for yourself or you want to engage other people, then you can just go from there. So you don't really have to lock in with one person for an entire time. Yeah. But that's totally up to you, depending on your goal. Are these any other classes related to this topic? Oh yes. So we um Excel Academy actually have SEO SEM class. Uh I use two days to conduct and then to share with you some case study, how do you do, and then probably we will use your company's one and then to guide you how should you want to do it SEO, SEM to the next level. So you can just talk to Excel Academy and then they will guide you. You can, uh, they will send you more information if you need, yeah? All right. Any other questions that you would like me to answer? All right. If you don't have, I want to say thank you very much. It may be a little bit rushed, but I hope it's okay for you. I summarize the whole things. Hope you screenshot it and then uh, you copy down the notes that I share with you. Just do something progress first. You will start seeing some interesting things. Huh? And I hope to see you next time in the class too. So thank you very much. Please keep in touch. Thank you, Zhu, for your kind words. And uh, pass back to the host. Adip. All right. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Mm. Thank you. Thank now, you. Now, if yeah. you have any final questions, please leave the please leave, please leave the in the comment chat box. So regarding your certificate, we are pleased to inform you that your attendance has been recorded and your course status will be marked as completed after the session. You will receive your e-certificate through the NTW portal upon successful completion of the TEE assessment. The certificate can be generated from the applied course section of your individual profile. As for the video recording of the session, it will be available on our YouTube channel at Cell Academy Malaysia by tomorrow. Now, let me inform you about our upcoming training sessions. If you are interested in enrolling in one of these courses, please contact us. We have Digital Marketing Masterclass conducted by Mr. Alec himself, SEO and SEM, ChatGPT and AI Tools Mastery, Canva Design Bootcamp, Microsoft Excel at C level, Microsoft Excel Intermediate and Advanced level, Microsoft Excel Data Analytics and Visualization, Microsoft Power BI Advanced Dashboard Reporting, So, thank you all for your participation and have a great have a great day. Once again, thank you, Mr. Alex. Thank you. I think uh, Zhu have a question. All these courses are available on NTW? Uh, yes. Mm, okay. So make sure go and learn more, get certificate, improve ourselves, and then we'll go uh, advance our life and career together. Thank you very much. See you all. Bye-bye. Right, thank you.